we had completed uh, through the primary endpoint a phase two study of a combination of the kind of like three most effective agents or classes of agents approved in CLL. So it's a combination triple therapy regimen for CLL using obinutuzumab, which is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody, ibrutinib, which is a BTK inhibitor, and venetoclax, which is a BCL2 inhibitor. And the goal of this regimen was to give these three highly effective drugs that have complementary mechanisms and kind of largely non-overlapping toxicities except for hematologic toxicity um, together and then do them as a time-limited treatment. So it's a fixed duration regimen of these three very potent drugs and it's given for about a year of treatment total. So the phase two study had two cohorts, one that was 25 patients who were previously untreated or treatment naive, and one that's 25 patients that had been previously treated, so had relapsed or refractory CLL. And uh, the primary endpoint was um, the rate of uh, complete remission with no detectable minimal residual disease, and that was actually 28% in both of these cohorts separately. Um, which was good. The overall response rate, as you can expect, was quite high. Um, and then there was a, a substantial amount of hematologic toxicity, but not really leading to um, kind of ill effects on the patient's long term. There weren't a lot of discontinuations for toxicities. There weren't, uh, you know, an unexpected number of infections. And overall, the, the treatment um, was pretty well tolerated by the patients. This was a younger, fitter cohort, so it is important to kind of think about what the side effects of this three drug combination might be in an older or less fit CLL cohort. So I just want to say that when I mentioned the safety data. So we've published those results, but the important thing about this treatment is since it's time limited, how long do these remissions last for? Because if you give these drugs in combination, but people only remain in remission after finishing this for a short time, the benefit of giving this three drug combination is probably not very good compared to just giving either ibrutinib or venetoclax as monotherapy or a fixed duration course of venetoclax. So the progression-free survival will be extremely important towards understanding the real value of this regimen. So this is presenting uh, three years of follow-up on our cohort of patients, and that's uh, over 36 months from the time they first started taking treatment um, as a median follow-up. And we found that the responses have remained durable. Um, we had one person in the treatment-naive cohort um, who died actually six months after stopping treatment um, due to neutropenia and infections. And then there were two people who developed progressive disease in the relapsed refractory um, cohort, both of whom are, are doing well. But um, we did have uh, two people who developed progressive disease. So um, again, the majority of people are remaining in remission at three years. I think that that's really important when you're trying to figure out what this regimen will ultimately be. Um, uh, best, like which, sorry, which patients this regimen will ultimately be best suited for and what the value is compared to other um, treatment schemes in CLL. Um, as you know, CLL uh, has a variety of highly effective therapies, so um, sorting out um, based on kind of efficacy, duration of response, and side effects is going to be really important, like sorting out which is appropriate for which patient populations based on some of those factors. Um, I do think it will take more than three years of follow-up on this cohort to really determine um, how long people remain in remission. Uh, where we're going next with this is a, a three-drug combination regimen of obinutuzumab, ibrutinib, and venetoclax based on this study um, is now in two different U.S. oncology cooperative group trials, one in patients that are um, less than 70 and one 70 and over. And uh, the comparator for both of those studies is ibrutinib and obinutuzumab. So there are now ongoing randomized phase three trials, one in younger patients and one in older patients comparing ibrutinib and obinutuzumab as a standard of care to this um, 
obinutuzumab, ibrutinib, and venetoclax triple ther therapy combination. So I think that's really going to be the most important towards understanding kind of a, the side effect profile in, in more completely and also the efficacy compared to kind of ongoing ibrutinib treatment. Um, although follow up on this smaller phase two study um, will be you know of, of high interest just because we want to know what happens to these um, patients that's 50 total, 25 treatment, I even 25 relapse refractory, um, just to try to give us some idea what to expect um, with the treatment overall. And then for interest, because infections and second cancers are such a high importance in CLL and really do impact the lives of our patients, um, we also briefly reviewed um, the occurrence of infections and also second cancers during the study, both in the kind of year-long treatment period and in the about two years of follow-up we have. And interestingly, um, second cancers were occurring in both periods, and as expected, infections were more frequent during treatment, so it'll just be nice for everyone to be able to see in the smaller study what the um, kind of spectrum is of, of infections and second cancers in this cohort. Um, lastly, kind of just uh, as an interest of the CLL community, we have been following minimal residual disease, which is just the detectable CLL in the blood in these patients during follow-up. Um, so we present that data um, just so you can see like who may have had return of, of residual disease to the blood, although the more recent data is a little hard to interpret due to um, kind of um, missed uh, appointments, uh, largely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're going to continue to follow that cohort in that regard too, and hopefully gain some insight into the kinetics of residual disease.